One day on my drive home, I saw these three towers. One of them had a bunch of blinking white lights. Another one had red lights that kind of faded in and out. And the third one, well, it wasn't doing anything. I'm lucky to have a radio engineer for a dad. So dad, why do some towers blink? Well, I, blinking, I would call like the way you described it, flashing, white light, or strobe. So, and then all these lights are to, to aid pilots in air traffic, helicopters, fighter planes, regular jets. So uh, that's the purpose of it. Well, that one tower that I saw had red lights that faded in and out, but I, I even think I, there's a freestanding tower just north of here that has red and white on top. Yeah, well, red lighting is a thing. It's in the regulations. It specifies red lighting or white lighting. And uh, one, of the, one of the things like the red lights can be a bulb like this inside of a red housing. Uh, could be LED. Where did you find this bulb? This was not in my studio. <laughs> this bulb is a spare bulb for a tower side. And most of us use the same bulb, same socket, 600 and something watts, what, uh, 620 watts. Yeah. It's a very standard broadcast bulb for a broadcast tower. And a lot of the beacons, they're pretty tall and they'll have one upside like this. Try not to shatter the like bulb that. on the microphone up there. <laughs> so they'll have two bulbs in the socket. That way when one bulb burns out, you realize you have a bulb out, but you're still legal with the second bulb. And then, but these, these like at my house, I don't have any of this kind of bulb anymore. I have, you know, these, this is a little bit different little size, bulbs, yeah. but these are LED. Is that <clears throat> yes. similar on towers? Yeah. So it's, it is the same, like a, an LED assembly for a tower uh, could be kind of flat and it has, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, set to just do what it needs to do. So, and like white light, that's, you typically, it used to be always strobes. And at KMOX, you remember we had the, the whole like assembly that, there, yeah, and you see the big. glass bulb, that's like a tube almost, but it had a, inside of it was a flashing, uh, I don't know what the gas is, but it flashed, and uh, that was what Xenon was typical. Or argon Xenon or Argon. Xenon, so I think Xenon is probably If I remember, correct. I'll put some clips in here from that. <laughs> yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, and the uh, so those those were the old way for that, and, and the bulbs there, you'd have one. That's for the... the uh, Stro the old strobes, but the newer ones are all white LED, and they can be little pancake-looking things compared to what the things are now. They're little, little round things, and they can direct that LED light really to help airplanes and have less trouble for people who live in homes or apartment buildings nearby. So if they have a tower like the one that's just north of here that's in a residential area, they're, yes. they're not just flashing everybody constantly. Yes, yes. You know, thinking about that tower, though, why do different towers have different lighting and di different colors and things? And I even remember, like, on the tower that's right by here, there's actually teeny tiny little lights that are, like, on the sides, <laughs> on the legs of the tower. Yeah. Well, the tower lighting uh, is in the uh, responsibility of the FAA, and they have a detailed plan. Uh, the options depend on the heights of the tower, where they are at. Uh, the location is obviously important. And sometimes red is a good solution, sometimes white, and sometimes both red and white uh, uh, solution. And a, an example is the tower that you're talking about. So why, why would you want both? Like, it seems like that's twice the complexity. <clears throat> well, you would, you would have strobe in the day and red at night. And, and, and people in their homes at night a red, uh, pulsing red light is a lot easier than a big flashing white uh, light. So, so sometimes if people are complaining about it, you might go that solution. You can propose the, uh, the red at night and, uh, and the dual lighting works. And then you, you literally see these two packs and there's one will be red and one will be white. That's what I've seen mostly, although I heard that they make one now. It's, it's all in one. But yeah. You could have RGB it. lights. Could you do home assistant for your tower lighting? <laughs> You'd have RGB, but that would not be allowed by the We'll FAA. actually talk about that a little bit, too, later, because yeah. the, there are some regulations for how you actually yeah. monitor these things. Yes, there are. Yep. But before we get to that, what, what about there's the one tower I saw didn't have any lights that were blinking at all. It, and I zoomed in, and I saw that there was a light on top, but it just wasn't doing anything. Yeah. Well, and this and this is about daytime mode. So a tower that's painted and that's legal for obstruction marking, uh, and you don't have to light during the day. So at night, their their lights would come on. So you can be in a situation where you like here, you could see three towers. Uh, one might be lit day and night with uh, white light, and two of them might be red light day only, but one kicks on earlier than the other because mm -hmm. of the the uh, their exact photocell triggering or if the, the photo lights. cell is like covered by a layer of soot from four <laughs> years yeah. so that tower is probably in daytime mode and or it could be an am tower uh, an am tower below 200 feet doesn't have to be lit 
So that's another one. In fact, all towers, I guess, under 200 feet, unless you're in a particular area where the FAA would require yes. it. You, you always so have to refer back to the you documentation. You always refer to the document. But like, you, uh, what is the tower site that we went to for the hot dogs? Uh, K-H-O-J. K-H-O-J. Yeah. Yes. Those don't have lights. They do right? not have lights. Towers under are under 200, 200 feet. feet. Yes. So they don't need lighting. So And then they don't need painting either. So that's one of those things that, again, always refer to that because just because you have a tower that's under 200 feet doesn't mean you don't have to make sure it complies, or you may have to paint it, or you may have to light and paint. Tower painting has changed a lot over the years. The older towers have lead in them, so whenever there's a project on the tower, it's not unusual to see the guys in some kind of a, uh, what do they call those? The foam ghillie suit, or I yeah, don't know what yeah, they're called. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they have that too. So, so anyway, that's the bottom line from then till now. So far, we've been talking about like radio and TV towers, the ones that are really big, but what about like little small towers. I know I see a lot of cell towers that don't have any lights at all, but sometimes they do. They just have like one little light bulb on top. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, even if they're like 50 to 100 feet tall, I've seen it sometimes. Yeah, yeah and that, that is a, there's always a reason for seeing a light somewhere, almost always on structures, including buildings and so forth. But uh, if you look around the area where you're seeing that tower that you know is not 200 feet, and it's got a light on the top. Look, or you're probably near an airport, a heliport, or somewhere where there's an aviation hazard. You know, hospitals, they have their heliports there. So somewhere, everywhere there is a possible hazard for flight, for aircraft, is going to have lights involved. And that's why we see a lot of buildings even have lights. So it sounds like we have towers and even buildings that have to have lights put up, but who's in charge of all this? Like, if I'm going to put up my own tower, who do I need to talk to to make sure that I'm doing it right and get it approved? Yeah, I think we go back to our uh, friends at the FAA. They have that particular circular, which you'll probably note in the comments or yes, whatever. We'll, we'll link to it. We'll link to it or whatever that <laughs> is. Because this is this is not the whole thing. The <laughs> no, whole thing is like, thing. Uh, what, 90 pages or it's, 190 yeah, pages? Uh, yeah, 100, over 100 pages. Yeah, and so in here it describes all kinds of uh, places where lighting is needed as, as for air safety. So that includes our broadcast towers, big chimney stacks, uh, water towers, bridges, nuclear power plant cooling towers, wind turbines, tall electrical towers. You know, those ones that they cross a river, they'll have those extra tall ones with markings in the middle. Sometimes those are required to have lighting. And there are also rules that even apply during construction projects. So you've got these big buildings going up, and you'll notice the cranes uh, will have lights on them. And there's a spec for that, how, like, how many lights have to be on the crane, at what height it has to be at. So, like, the, you know, it's, it's just an interesting thing. As you look around the next 12 months, look around at all those lights. You'll, see a lot of them. <laughs> you'll enjoy it like I do. You'll look like a radio lights. engineer once you know about these things. <laughs> So that's made me think, like, looking through these instructions, uh, I did find this page, and I thought, like, could you use tower lights, the number of them, as a way to judge how tall a tower is, kind of a rough estimate? Yes, you uh, actually you can, because the specifications, like for tall, uh, these would apply to radio and TV towers, uh, they re require so many lights, depending on the height, and so, you know, like around here, we have, we would have the F4 version with four lights, four blinking light levels, a light at the top if the uh, antenna here at the top is higher than 40 feet. So you can kind of look and get an idea of whether you're looking at a 500-foot tower or a 1,000-foot tower. Uh, I don't think you could go like 700 versus 1,000 as easily. But, but you can tell, and the guys know, I know a couple of pilots that are also engineers or selling in radio business, and they can do that. They'll tell you, you know, like I was passing a tower. What's a tower that's a 1,200-foot tower doing out here? So it's pretty, pretty fun, and you go to... Um, uh, this document has everything you need if you want to take the time and study that and memorize it and then fly. One other thing that since we've been running this channel, I keep getting emails about. Uh, if someone sees that there's lights out on a tower, like let's say it's nighttime and you're out there and you notice like one of these towers for the past few days hasn't had a light on, uh, can you do anything about that? What, what should you do? Well, uh, first of all, if, if it's required to be lit, uh, every tower that's required to be lit is also required to be monitored. Uh, so like as we in radio, we put a monitoring circuit on the uh, electrical feed to the filaments, and you can measure how much current's going through there, right? So so you got to monitor it. You've got to uh, get alarmed by that. So the alarm can call you or reach you. Uh, but you also have to call every day, check your circuit, your system, and make sure the lights are on. So if you only are lit at night, that means that call has to happen after it's dark. And so you got to verify that your lighting is working. 
and you have to report it within 30 minutes. And you find that lights out, you got to report it. And they, we, we call that a NOTAM, uh, where they, the FAA puts it on a system that all the pilots can have access to. And they know that there's a tower there, but it lights out. Uh, and it can use it in their flight planning. You're an engineer and you have the tie-in with the FAA or whatever, but what would I be able to do if I did see a tower that was out? Uh, well, you can do a NOTAM search. FAA, I would just type in FAA NOTAM. We'll put a link to it in the put description too. Put a link to too. it, the one we found. <laughs> so you can do that and kind of try to look through and see if you see it. The other thing, you could contact the tower owner uh, or the engineer at the side, the tower's engineer, and they can check it uh, into it. They should already know because they have their monitoring equipment, right? They should. They should already know. They do. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, if you're out there, usually the tower, either on the tower or on the fencing around it or on the building, will have a ASR number, which identifies that tower to the FAA and the FCC, actually. But uh, but that number would be the exact tower that you'd be reporting. So hopefully you learned a little bit more about why there are so many flashing lights around at night, and not just for radio towers, but for bridges, buildings, and more. What other things do you want to know about towers? Let us know in the comments.